All right. Time to order that room service. Uh... This is not the kind of place that has a room service. I'm sorry. What? Hotels do room service. This is a motel. Just like the summer place was a mobile home and not a trailer. <laughs> right. But the other way around. But there's a restaurant and lounge right next door, though. I'm gonna head down there and get us dinner, okay? And I'm going to have a cocktail while I wait. It's been a long day. I'll be back with something to eat soon. Well, all right. That's almost like room service. <laughs> what do you want to eat? Oh, um, burger? Um, burger it is. Do your homework. God, my mom is such a mom. She's totally like the, can I go to the washroom? I don't know, can you? Kind of teacher. I knew I shouldn't have brought my backpack on this trip. Now mom expects me to do my homework. Well, I guess there's not much else to do cooped up in this motel room. Wait, what? Wait, I found this already. I found the... Oh, looks like it might be a little bit bugged up. Yeah, I, I opened the locker. In the living room. Oh, I, I, uh, the crossing out is a little bit bugged up. If you go down here, it's crossed up, but if you look at it, it's not. Okay, whatever. It's whatever. Do homework. Pretty sure I just heard my phone vibrate. Oh, how lovely. Dirt-flavored water. No thanks. <laughs> it's a motel, we don't get service here. Decaffeinated. There shouldn't be anything in here. Ooh, a visitor's guide. Oh. Um... Hmm. Explore beautiful Powhatan, where tradition and excellence meet. Okay. There shouldn't be much more else in here, but maybe the last person would have left something. Sea tissue. Oh, switch the channels or something. Mm hmm. Notify the blah blah blah. Be aware. Da, da, da. Be sure. Da, da. Got it. <laughs> Do not disturb. No, we don't have it on. If you put that thing there, your mom's not going to be able to get back in. <laughs> Oh. And these are the pills, my, my grandma's pills. Right? Yeah. Why did my, my, why did my mom bring my grandma's pills? I thought we were throwing them all out. Toiletries bag. Doing a great job at this whole doing my homework business. Oh, wow, like an actual nice bathtub. Oh, yeah, definitely stealing these. Yeah, you're not stealing it, it's for you to take. It's fine. Mountain Valley conditioner shampoo. They wouldn't give you that big a bottle, though. It's so dark here. There's my phone. Hey, Tessa Bear. Hope you had a good day. Busy with some work late tonight, but we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thinking of you always, Dad. Text Dad, okay. Hi, Dad. What's up, Tessa Bear? Nothing, just gonna cross the Canada border soon. Wanted to say hi! <laughs> Canada? What for? We found some clues in Grandma and Grandpa's old summer house, and we think there might be more to find at another place across the border. So we're gonna check it out. Tess, are you hunting for bootlegger gold without me? <laughs> Maybe. We're gonna see what we can find. Can't wait to hear all about it once you're back. And to get my cut of the action. Can't wait to talk to you too. I had a question. It's about you and mom. Mm hmm. I feel a bummer incoming, but okay. You want a phone? We just phone and talk about it in person. In person? On the phone? Well... You always said mom wanted you to leave and that's why you're not living with us anymore. But mom said you were the one that wanted to leave, so I'm confused. She said that, huh? Well, I'd say it was mutual, kid. But I had a big opportunity out here and I had to take it. 
I understood why your mom didn't want to come along and that's okay. That's why you left home and quit Video Galaxy and everything? It's not the same without you here, or at the store. <laughs> I'm sure the store is even better without me. Who wants their dad as their boss? But you made this store so fun. The window displays on the Halloween costume contest and movie quote trivia. The new manager is just boring. So what is your big opportunity out there? Well, you know I headed out here for a new biz venture and I'm in the investment stage. Can't wait to tell you more about it, but it just wouldn't feel comfortable until I know it's gonna pan out. Yeah, it sounds like a scam. This 2000 whatever, it's like what? Just a few years before the financial crashes and all? Just want to make sure everything's perfect for when I tell you more. Remember when you were little and you worked on that book you drew me for weeks and wouldn't let me peek at it till it was all done? I've still got that book right here with me, and you didn't want me to see it until you had it all perfect. This is just like that. You still have that? Yeah, I'd never part with it. No way, no how. I just don't want to disappoint you by jumping the gun. You understand that, don't you, kiddo? Yeah. Can't wait to hear more. Soon, I hope. Gotta get back to it. Love you, Tessa Bear. Okay, love you too. Now my dad moved for a work thing and my mom didn't want to follow him. And that's what ended in a divorce. So she didn't... It's not like... Mm. Yeah, well, if he was working at like some Video Galaxy as a manager or whatever... Kind of a dead endy job, right? I can see why he'd do that, but yeah, mom being upset about it, it's like, it's like we just got ditched by our dad. Hey Frankie, we survived the abandoned summer home. And how haunted was it? Very. Oh my god, how many ghosts did you see? Nothing but ghosts, the place was packed full of them. Damn, I want to see a ghost. Spook- sp <laughs> Speaking of spooky. How did your mom react to you telling her about Nevada? Shut up, lol. I didn't tell her. Why are you so obsessed with that? But is Reno in Nevada? Let me look it up. Oh my god, Reno is a place in Nevada. Mmm. So we have a plane ticket ready to go visit... Not even visit dad. Do we want to live with dad? Ooh. And we haven't even told our mom about it. Are we visiting though? Because it was a one-way ticket. We didn't have two tickets, it was one ticket. You need to tell her. What if she doesn't let you go? I'm gonna, and she'll let me go. Just do it now. Okay, I will when the time's right. When? I don't know. So? Did you find what you were looking for? Um, yes and no. We're heading up to Canada tomorrow. What? Yeah, we found some stuff about who my grandpa might have really been. We're gonna go see if we can find out more about him. What? You might be part Canadian? Yeah, one-fourth maple syrup running through my blood. <laughs> I'll call and tell you about it when we're home. Reception out here is bad. We're in a weird little motel for the night. It's pretty cool. It's old and vintage, and my mom's getting me a burger from the bar. That's awesome. Well, have you looked around the motel room? Is there anything weird in there? Probably. If I find anything weird, I'll text you about it. Put phone in pocket. Yeah. Francine wants to hear about weird stuff in here. I should text message her if I find anything interesting. Okay. Not gonna do my homework, of course. Weird? I mean, is this weird? There's a brochure here about things to do near here. What you got there? Sailing, a bridge, farm festival, historic downtown. What's so historic about downtown? Mostly that it's old, I'm guessing. Wow, sounds incredible. Yeah, a lot to do before we leave. <laughs> Try not to have too much fun. Well, very, very... interesting stuff that we're texting her. Stationary pad. What is that? Oh, someone's been drawing some stuff. I don't know. What? Bible? A 
it's so weird to me that there's Bibles at the hotel. But I guess that's just like a American thing. Especially even in 2002, 2003, I guess so. I feel like I've seen that even quite recently, maybe like 2010. Is this weird? Oh, my mom's sleep shirt. What's a sleep shirt? At some point, adults get them. They're from a concert or college. <laughs> Which is this? My mom's college. That's cool. I don't know. I think I might go right to work after high school. My mom would explode, though. You're gonna hate this. What? Your mom's right. You should go to college. You can do your ideas after. School's expensive. Instead, I could have a pool. So it's education or a pool? Yes, and I choose pool. I will shut up, but you should go. You're too smart. You need to show them. Tess, you gotta go to college so we can learn more about how to design web pages and make the big bucks. Oh. She's my best friend. I guess we tell her everything. I just found some pills in my mom's suitcase. Oh, what kind? Fluoxetine? I don't know what that is. Yeah, me neither. You have a computer, right? Look it up for me. Maybe stop stooping in your mom's stuff. Nah. My mom's toiletries bag. Mouthwash. You want to hear about the... the free stuff we can get? The soap? Still looking through everything again. I brought my towel from home. What? My own towel. It's named Dr. Softness. Oh no, honey. It's soft as a bird. Aren't all towels soft? No. Fine, okay. Look, I don't want to use motel towels. Continue. I mean, they were just hanging here when we got here. Yeah, they just cleaned them and hung them for you. Did they? Yes. I don't like not knowing. If you want to be worried about motels, I have one word for you. Sheets. Yeah, but I, I... Sheets, at least you're probably gonna be wearing clothes while touching, right? But your... Your naked body is touching hotel towels, okay? Like, that's... That's significantly nastier if they're dirty. Okay, do we have to do homework? Do we have to do home... Okay, okay, fine. Alright, let's get some homework done, maybe. Francine, you want to hear about how we don't have any stations? Why don't we have any stations? What kind of service is this? Gosh. Wait. Oh. Wait, we just took... We just took the remote. We just took it. That's all we did. I'm not seeing that we can change channels, though. Are you just saying that I can do it from afar now? Because I have the remote? Maybe? I think that might be it. <laughs> okay. Oh, the scientific calculator. Yes, of course. Do homework until mom comes back. Uh, okay. Hey, it's burger time. How's that homework coming along? Fine. How was the restaurant? Ugh, overpriced. But I guess that's the price you pay for convenience. Here's your burger. Thanks. Enjoy. I'm gonna call August. Tell her I said hi. August? Guess where I am. We have nightshade. At a motel in Poetan. Poetan. <laughs> Tess and I took a little road trip. Poetan. She says hi. We paid a visit to the old summer house. You remember the summer house? Mobile home. Yes, it's still there. Anyway, we came away with some questions about mom and dad. August should be here for this. This burger is my rival and I will defeat it. Let's defeat it. Oh, what do you mean it's your rival? It's delicious. Even got some fries with it. Lo, I have vanquished the mighty burger. <laughs> I 
Good thing we closed this, huh? It's too echoey. We can't hear it. Increase turnout at Andromeda. Improve word of mouth. What? T-shirts, posters in local schools, actors, directors give lectures. Still thinking about work while doing all this. Found a note my mom wrote on a bar napkin. Uh-oh, what's it say? It's notes about her theater, like how to get more people to go. I thought a bar napkin would be more interesting. This must be worse than usual. These ideas are tame, we need to punch it up. We run down the street launching fireworks yelling, THEATER! I get my plane to spell out C plays in the sky! We go to an elementary school play, and boo, better acting at Andromeda! Whoa. What? Kids bounce back. I'm envisioning the backstage mom rage. Maybe napkin thoughts win. <laughs> okay, I think I found all the weird stuff I'm gonna find. I should do my homework. Whatever, nerd. Thanks for letting me know. Alright. Poor mom. We're not gonna hear any conversations, I don't think. Yeah. Text Francine again. Hey, I've got to help my dad with dinner. Have a good drive to Canada. Don't let the moose bite. That's it for now. Okay. I just... Do you think... Could dad have... <sighs> yeah, she's here. Hold on. She wants to talk to you. I'm going out for a smoke, back in a few. Quit, Mom. Hello, Teresa. Hi, Aunt August. This is all... It's pretty crazy, huh? Yeah, that's one word for it. How do you feel about it? I think Tess feels excited right now, because it's like a detective thing. But later on, how will we feel about our grandpa not actually being our grandpa, if that really does turn out to be the case? That's something else. I think it's pretty exciting. Yeah. I mean, it's a bigger deal for you and mom. I just think, I don't know, it's just kind of, it's like seeing a whole new side of grandma, now that she's gone. Yeah, I was still pretty young when our dad died, so I think it's a lot harder on your mom than on me. I never really knew him. I'm sorry. It's all right. I've spent enough on therapy to almost be over it. Ugh. Did you guys find anything out there? I haven't been since we were kids. Uh-oh. Do we tell her about Nightshade? We found your old friend, Nightshade. Oh, Nightshade. I'd forgotten about him. Kind of a spooky name. <laughs> yeah. I was a spooky kid. You know, our dad dying really did shake me up. My jade was to try and fill that void, I guess. That must have been hard. Yeah. What about the house? What was it like? It, uh... It was pretty beat up. Yeah. I'm surprised it was still standing. I guess part of me hoped we could just move out there. <laughs> move out there? Oh my gosh, you're breaking my heart. You'd rather live in the middle of nowhere than in Chicago? What? <laughs> With me, in the townhouse. Didn't your mom say? Oh wow. No. What about mom? Can, can she stay with you? Of course, both of you. But she doesn't want to. Ooh. What do you mean? She... <sighs> Look, you should talk to her about it. It isn't my place. Why didn't... Oh, hold on. Work is calling. Uh, I gotta go. Love you, Teresa. Uh, love you too, Anne August. Ooh. This is interesting. I'm seeing there are several things that can happen, it feels like. We have a ticket to Nevada. Mom didn't tell me that Aunt August actually invited us to live in Chicago. Does Mom just want us to find an apartment somewhere then? I mean, we have money problems, Mom! Auntie's rich, she t She's in Chicago, why don't we go to the big town? What's happening here, man?
Mom. And Jocelyn is looking at him, and it's so obvious that she forgot her line, and of course she did, because she only got off book a few days before, and he's just staring at her. Uh-huh. And Todd needs her to say it, otherwise the whole scene makes no sense, and it's dead quiet. It's opening night! And so then, she just says, Who are you? The Pirate of Penzance? Tess. What? Are you even listening to what I'm saying? Yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean, I'm listening. Oof. If you want to just drive quietly for a while, that's fine. I can do that. No, I think we need to talk a little bit. This drive is so freaking boring. I wonder what's going on with Dad and Francine. Hey, but about your little theater thing just now, though. I feel like ad-libbing, improvisation, stuff like that's really fun. That's part of the whole experience, right? It's not about whether, whether you make mistakes or not and all that stuff. Wait, where's my cell phone? Did I put it in the glove box? Did you bring it with you? I hope you did. You better have. I turn the radio on. Hmm. Oh, we have new directions again? No, these were the original directions, right? Yeah. Oh no. What? Oh! oh my cell phone. I left my cell phone at the hotel. <sighs> Are you sure? Yes, I looked everywhere. It's not in the glove box. It's not in my backpack. I, I don't have the charger either. I, I must have left it on the charger at the hotel. Um... I thought I was pretty sure we picked it up though. We can't go back. Oh no, I, I don't want to yell at mom or anything. I need my phone. Tess, we have been driving for over an hour already. We are not driving all the way back to the motel just so you can have your phone for one day. You don't understand! Is there... Is there a particular reason why we need the phone? It'll probably be gone if you go back for it. It might be gone if we don't go back for it. I'm sure it'll be in the motel lost and found. We can pick it up on the way home. Mom, we have to turn around. We haven't been driving for an hour. We Yes, can... we have. We left one hour and 18 minutes ago. Well, we can drive faster on the way back. I am not breaking the speed limit and getting pulled over and getting a ticket because you can't wait till tonight to get You know, your... I... I wouldn't have left my phone there if it wasn't Ooh. for you. Y you were lying to me. And I was so distracted. And now, and now you won't even go back and... Hold on, hold on. I, I was lying to you? When was I lying to you? Well, yeah, we need to talk about it. Oh! Wait, I know we found the pills, but I thought my mom... They were prescribed for my grandma. My mom was taking it? Well, there's two things happening then. I think we can only ask about one, I feel like. I'm more concerned about my mom's health. You never told me about the pills you're taking. What pills? Did you go through my suitcase? Yeah, that's where I found them. Flu, oxy, something? What are those? What business is that of yours? You went through my stuff? Yeah. Yes. It's Prozac, Tess. But since you apparently need to know... With everything going on, I need a little help, and I'm not ashamed of it. But I am very disappointed at you for violating my privacy. So that's what this is about? My prescription medication? No. Um... No? You didn't tell me we could stay with August. <sighs> Why would you just... Lie to me and say August was unwilling to help us. I didn't. I didn't lie. I'm sorry, she Mom. She doesn't want to help. Helping would be buying the house, and when I asked, she said no. But she offered to let us stay with her. And I said no. There's a million reasons why that's a bad idea. <laughs> At least we'd be sleeping in a bed and not a car. We aren't going to sleep in the car. I'll figure something out. Aren't you concerned? We have no plan. You have no plan. 
I have a plan. I Money might be tight, but it's not like I don't have a job. <sighs> I still feel like our prior- I mean, obviously for the purposes of this mystery that we're trying to chase down right now, we're doing it, but... The fact that we're prioritizing a field- a road trip to Canada instead of trying to find an apartment, trying to land on our feet... <laughs> it does worry me even more than this situation normally should have. You're mad at August for not buying the house, but buying a house... The money for buying a house and the cost of her letting you guys stay with her is completely different. Can she buy it? I guess she can. The implication is that she can. Let's just ask about Auntie. Why don't you like August? Excuse me? Where did you get that idea? You always act like she's a pain when she's just trying to help. It's like you're jealous of her. First of all, I am not jealous of her. It's a lot easier to make money when you live by yourself, especially if you're so far away. Your own family is an afterthought. I had to do all the work for Grandma. August just stayed in Chicago. You're making her sound so selfish. She's not like that. You've never lived with her, Tess. It's not going to be like your little vacation. August thinks she knows what's best for everyone. I can't be around someone like that every day. Wow. I can't imagine what that feels like. Whoa. Do you think you're the only person with problems and the rest of us are just running around doing whatever? You're exhausting. No wonder dad left. Whoa! Don't bring your dad into this. Why not? Why can't we talk about dad, actually talk about dad for once? The divorce, the... I don't want to have this discussion right now. Fine. You don't want to have this discussion? I'll just find out when I go to Nevada. What? When I see dad when I go next month. You're not going to Nevada next month. Yes, I am. I already have the tickets. What do you mean? With what money? From Web design? my business, I'm going- From your business. I can't believe you. That you would go behind my back? If you just told me what was happening, I wouldn't have to. I wouldn't have to ask Dad to tell me the truth. The truth? Please. Oh, so that's what this is all about, huh? You want to know what's the truth? Fine. Here's the truth. The divorce wasn't mutual. I divorced him. You... Your father announced he was going to Reno to become a full-time gambler and expected me to say, Oh, sure, honey. Feel free to abandon me and my daughter and dying mother to try out your next get-rich-quick scheme. What? What kind of person would think a marriage could work with that kind of distance? So then I have to be the bad guy, just like always. He gets to run away and be the fun parent, and I have to be the mean mom and do all the work. So I divorced him. I'm sure he's just as proud of his new job as I am, and that's why you're hearing about it now. Uh... So sure, go to Nevada, ask him all about it. I'm sure he'll tell you the truth. You know, I made a, a lot of comments about how I felt mom was being kind of eh, but I, I understand that her spot, she's being put in a very tough spot here. Having to take care of grandma, having to take care of me, she's sandwiched between the two generations, plus August on top of that. And yeah, she's right, we don't know how it's like to live with her. So I, I, I always, I feel bad for her too, like, she, oh, she, whoa, 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 whoa! Hey! It's a dead end. It's not a dead end. We just have to get out and walk. Where, Tess? I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. I think it's through here. Thanks for the help, by the way. Shh. Look, I know you're upset. We both are. Let's just get in, see what we can find about Pierre, and get out. Before I change my mind. Agreed. Wow, is it this easy to go to Canada? We're already here? Not only did I lose my phone, but I got in a fight with mom. This sucks. I guess now we're just gonna sit here in silence until we get to the stupid boat houseboat. What a fun road trip. That was sarcastic. <laughs> they didn't let me finish talking. Well, it looks like we finally made it to the houseboat we saw in the picture. Mostly owned by the mystery man, aka Pierre Lautrec. Whatever we find here better be worth it. Mom, I... she has to raise me by herself while Dad just sort of, like, effed off and into some random place. 
And you know, the stuff he was talking about was kind of dodgy. I don't know. Investments. Oh, uh, meetings. I don't know, man. Summer. Well, no one lives here anymore, obviously. Oh, that... Whatever the words were, they've been crossed out. Wait, this was supposed to have this many different families here? Oh. Latrec? That's the name of the mystery man. Think he's got mail? Hmm. Guess we'll never know. It's locked anyway. Maybe that's for the best. Tampering with other people's mail is illegal. It's only illegal if people find out. We found a mailbox labeled Latrec. We can't get into it though. Mom says it would be illegal, but that's quitter talk. I agree. I only see like one, maybe two houses here? How come there's that many mailboxes? Where in Canada are we? There's not even a freaking- wait, there's no sea here, it's like a desert. Receding tides or something, I guess. Yeah. Mr. Pierre. I hope he didn't die of a broken heart. Because I need questions answered. Would have been pretty, but it's kind of an isolated place. Please remember, this is a shared facility for all residents who fish off their boats or the dock. If you borrow equipment to clean or prepare your catch, return it to its storage space in a... Hmm? In. In an orderly fashion. Someone made a typo. And if you clean your catch on the workbenches here, please clean us, clean up thoroughly before retiring for the evening. We all rely on one another's consideration to keep the fishing shack in good shape. This means you, Pierre. 1974? Well, so the whole community just sort of moved out, probably around 1974. St. Jude Dam gets go-ahead. Hmm. <gasps> Pierre! Pierre was here. Looks like we're on the right track. This isn't his place specifically, though. This is a shared facility, so they say. Ooh. Grimy. Is that dried blood? Ooh. Ew. Ew, ew, ew. Why on earth did I just touch that? Well, it's not about touching it. This is a hygiene issue. You don't know what kind of diseases are on that. I thought it was like strawberry jam or something. Hopefully it's just fish. Yeah, maybe they were dissecting some fish here or whatever. Hmm. Yikes. Somebody has anger issues. Couldn't just set down the knife gently, could ya? I was just gonna say, maybe we don't have to pick up every little thing, but then, you know, sometimes she comments on it. <laughs> Let's sink. Water bottle from a million years ago. Lots of fishing lures. Fisherman's hat, not a fedora like my grandpa. Okay, it's just kind of dark in here. Uh, can I turn on the lights? It doesn't seem like I can pull the string. Okay. Well, we know he lives here. But not in this shack, so maybe we should head to his actual place. Which is right next door. How are we supposed to get on board? Maybe there's something around here we can use. We want to get across to the boat, but if we try to jump that gap, we'll break our shin bones. Maybe there's something around here that we can use to get across. 
This boat? These boats? All these boats? Caution, danger. Oh. That plank, right? Probably. This is so stupid. We're trespassing. We need to go back home. But we... What if you fall off and break your neck, Tess? Or who knows what's even in that boat? Or if the floorboards are all rotted, or... or... But we're already here. And the trailer home... Mobile home. The mobile home was fine. <laughs> I, I just think... If we go back now, what's the point? Don't you want to know what happened to Grandma? To find Pierre? Mm. Okay, fine. You stay here, and I'll see what I can find. No! No! You can't go in without me. Don't tell me what I can't do, Tess. No matter how grown up you think you might be, I'm still your mother. I... You're right. I'm sorry. I just... We've done all of this so far together. I just don't want to give that up. <sighs> all right. We'll do it together. But I should go first. No, I should go. No way! What if you fall off? I could say the same to you. I should go first. I'm not gonna let my poor, aged mother walk across a rickety bridge before I'm sure it's safe. Let's flip a coin. Call it. Heads or tails. No. No. I'm, I'm going. going first. It's my filial duty. You really think it's dangerous? No. If I thought it was dangerous, I wouldn't walk across at all. Great. Then we'll flip a coin. I call heads. Oh my god. <laughs> I won! Just oh, be fantastic. careful and stay away from the edge! I feel like... Like, I don't know, this kayak or canoe or whatever the hell this is would be a little bit safer? Like, this plaque has been sitting here for 30 years. I'm actually more worried about... Whoa, I'm, I'm slipping off. Okay, we're fine. We made it. Don't jump on it, though. I don't know how long it'll hold. Pierre, so what what did this say? The idol on? The idol on. The idol on? But it's crossed out. Oh, what are we gonna find in here? We don't know. Have a look around the outside first, just scout it out. Oh, there's a flare gun there. Wow, this is so... Hmm, if somebody had motion sickness or something, would this just be permanently... Well, it's by the sea. But it's not like the house is gonna shake or something, right? I don't know. Would motion sickness be an issue? Oh my god. Wow, this is from when Grandma was really young. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen this one. You look a lot like her. <laughs> really? I always thought I looked more like my father. Um, maybe you were just imagining things? What? Oh, you mean because he might not have been my father? That's hmm. insensitive to say. <laughs> I suppose I can see the resemblance now that I think about it. You have her smile. The way someone smiles, is that really genetic? I don't know, but this is a pretty risque photo. Doesn't really leave much to the imagination for what kind of relationship they had. Beautiful handwriting for my grandma. Who, you know, she does typewriting for a living. Like, advice column, but she still hand wrote it. I was surprised to receive another letter from you so soon. A houseboat. It's a romantic thought, living right on the water. But don't you suppose it might be a bit small for us both and two children, including a teenager? Couldn't you have written to me before making this decision? We are still here, waiting for the heat to die down. While I'm excited to start our new life afresh, I have begun to rack up worries. How will the children react? With all they've already been through, what do you suppose my parents will think, and us just disappearing? My poor mother. She's already lost a son-in-law. Won't people come looking for us? Are you sure there's no other way? Helen. Yeah, and then the response was that he got a little bit angry, the postcard. A letter from Grandma! Can you imagine if my mother had actually moved us up here to stay? I'd be Canadian. You wouldn't <laughs> even exist. 
Whoa. What? Well, who knows if I would have had a daughter if my whole life had changed back then. I certainly wouldn't have met your father. Wow. So this is like looking into an alternate reality. I'd like to live in another reality. Like what? Don't, I don't think we should say that. They're already not together, and them being together probably wouldn't be a good thing anyway. They don't like each other right now. At least mom doesn't like my dad, I think. One where we were really rich? This is still kind and of... And fix up the Andromeda mm. and make every play there amazing? Tess. And we could keep grandma's house and make it all perfect, like better than it's ever been? There's no way to that reality from here. Either option was not... It's kind of insensitive for Tess to say, but she's 16, she doesn't know, doesn't have much tact, but whatever thing that you say to your mom that you wish we had, it, well, first of all, you're wishing we had it because we don't have it right now, right? And then her being a single mom, it's it's gonna make her think about like her, her own parenting over the years and how she wasn't able to provide for her daughter as much as she could have, blah blah blah. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why I know so much about this. Definitely not because I was test before. Oh, wow. The magazine for men, gentlemen. Oh my god. 12 page pictorial on the girls of Iceland. Novella Istanbul by Night by Kamikaze. Author Richard Volp. Wow. Cool. Open it. Tess, don't touch that. Why not? It's just as grimy as anything else in this boat. A different Plus, kind of grime. I want to find out what the winter campus fashions were in 1968. Ugh, you don't know where that's been. It's literally been right here for 30 years. I mean before that. Ooh. Like, <sighs> never mind. And I think it was fringe jackets. The winter campus fashions in 1968? And patterned tights. But really, put that down. All sorts of unhygienic grunt. Fashion? You really think this this magazine talks about fashion? Okay. If you say so. It's locked. This must be where the money is. <laughs> I seriously doubt that, but regardless, we'll have to... Can I just kick it in? I'd say you're free to try, but I don't want you hurting yourself. How sturdy can it be? <gasps> All right, pretty sturdy. Really? Feel like I could kick it in. Pierre's office, whatever's in there could blow the lid off this whole thing. Of course, it's locked because nothing's ever easy. We'll find a way. We always do. Cool. Nobody to spy on, though. Wonder what kind of job Pierre had. Just kind of got up and went to Canada and lived on a boat. Hopto Lake, Ontario. We are in Ontario right now. Oh, this is, yeah, this is not West Coast. That's right. This is East Coast. Received from Mr. Pierre Lautrec $3,000 in exchange for the houseboat the Eidolon. Wisner was one of the names on the mailbox. $3,000? That's a lot. $3,000? For a houseboat? Are you saying that's a lot? Or a little? A lot for you, Tess. These are like $1968, right? I mean... $3,000 then is probably like... A million dollars. Jesus, Tess, how do you think inflation works? Like I said? I think for any dollar amount before 1970, you just multiply whatever the price was by one million. Exactly. I see. I'm sure the Federal Reserve would love you. So how much then? I don't know. $10,000? Well, that was my second guess. So, what else could you have bought for that much back then? A car? A nice car? Probably. Maybe. Yeah, so this crappy boat for the same amount you could buy, like, a sports car with? Seems like a lot. But you can live on a houseboat. You could live in a sports car, if you don't have a very high standard of living. Yeah, much higher standard of living on this rotting houseboat. Hmm. Well, he, he put his plan into action, but Grandma never came. Travel expenses. 
gas, postcards, lunch, steak, motel, six pack beer, dinner, stamps, breakfast, liquor. <gasps> but at the very end. Wait. Yeah, that's a lot of money. At the very end, right? 40k. All that added up to 40k? Am I reading this wrong? That's kind of insane. Damn. 40 grand. We've definitely found our man. This must have been from when he drove up here. Imagine spending $6 on a steak lunch. Or $7 for a tank of gas. Would kill for it. Did people just drink more back then? <sighs> yeah, I think so. But this is a lot, even for 1968. Yeah, what was his job? He seems like he was fairly well off. Boy, really getting into the sea captain persona, aren't we? Did the boat ever even leave this dock? <laughs> Don't you need a license for something like that? Was he also a smoker? Damn it, man. Everybody smoked back then. Those aviators. I kind of feel bad for him, even if my grandma might have cheated on grandpa. Grandma just sort of left him hanging. Hmm. Yeah, smokers everywhere. Well, I don't think we're getting down there like that. Pierre's office is locked. His mailbox is locked. He's got a ton of fishing rods on the wall. But, oh, what if, why don't we just smash the door open with a fire extinguisher? That'll probably work. But yeah, we can't go down here. How do we go down then? There's a bit down there as well. You could see there was stuff in the back here, but... Oh, wait, wait, oh! All right. Whoa. Evil. Hey. Dodge this. Wait till your mom sees. She's gonna get mad. It's like he just got up and left while he was in the middle of fishing. Played Silent Hill. Just like Silent Hill. What? Oh, it's it's this video game we played at Francine's house. It's a horror game. She really likes that stuff. Seriously, Tess? You're thinking about video games right now? It's foggy in the game. Oh. <laughs> These kids and their, their video games rotting their minds, media causing violence, blah blah. So there, there's a hatch here as well, it seems like. I don't know if we can open it, though. But I've noted it. I've noted it. Oh, no. He had everything prepared. There's, like, gifts for us and stuff. Oh, dear. No, oh, it's for four players. Sorry, Pierre. Oh, that's really depressing. He really had- he tried his best to set things up as much as he could. Is what it looks like. No one ever made use of this stuff. Please don't go on about the silly ideas in my head. My concerns are far from silly. This affects all of us. You say we'll have everything we could ever hope for, but I'm not the one who decided to run off across the border and have silly little Helen pick up her entire life and her children's lives at the drop of a hat to follow, no matter how much money was involved. I hope for things that money can't buy. Treasured friendships I've held since I was a girl, my relationship with my parents and siblings, satisfying work where I get to help people, my children to grow up in the loving company of their grandparents and their friends. These are the things that you ask me to give up. And for what? Isolation? An unfamiliar place? A leaky boat? Money to spend? On what? What does it matter? If everything else is lost. That's true. Thank you for thinking of us, Grandma. You tell him, Grandma. Yeah. 
not one to mince words. All those years of writing advice columns paid off, I guess. Kind of nice that she was thinking about you guys, too. Yeah. Not just uprooting your life, dumping you in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. I can't imagine what it would have been like to grow up here. <laughs> You'd have to learn French. <gasps> Sacre bleu. <sighs> oh no, it's already happening. <laughs> you don't have to learn French. I'm pretty sure even in Quebec, which is the, the French province in Canada, you can get by with English. I'm pretty sure. I haven't ever been, but yeah. I mean, for the record, there is only one province in Canada that speaks French. Kind of like the, the odd people out. <laughs> Life jackets. How does plumbing work on a boat? Where does it go? It just dumps directly out into the ocean? Are we polluting the damn place? Oh, we had a whole kitchen. Well, whoever this Pierre fellow was, Definitely was pretty well off. But like Grandma said, she wants things that money can't buy. Did he even ask her then? Because it kind of sounds like he just got up and was like, you know what, this is the plan. He never even asked her. Robbers hit again in Porton. Porton. Local and state police are looking for a group of thieves who've made off with an undisclosed amount- <gasps> Undisclosed amount of cash taken from Clayman Clothiers in a burglary Saturday night. Wait, is this where the money's from? According to state police, the men broke into the store around 1.20 a.m. They dismantled the store safe, taking the money bag before fleeing. There were no witnesses. We're encouraging local businesses to deposit all cash to their banks at the end of each business day, said Officer Randall Weston of the Porton Police. Until the burglars have been apprehended, it's too risky to leave any money lying in the store overnight. Michigan State Police have set up an anonymous tip line for any information on the identities of the thieves. <gasps> Whoa. The burglary ring! Mom, Grandma's boyfriend here was a bank robber. Oh my god. <sighs> Why else would he have this? Maybe my mother... sent it to him. For what? To keep him abreast of current events? Oh, come on, Mom. Grandma had a thing going with a bank robber. How cool is that? Well, okay, they didn't rob any banks. It was the jewelry counters at department stores and things like that. Department store robber doesn't quite have the same ring to it. And it wasn't robbery. It was burglary. What's the difference? I don't know a either. A robbery is when you take something from someone under duress. A burglary, you take it when they're unaware. I think. Really? You think? Listen, it's been a while since I've brushed up on my criminology. And why are they so sure it was men? What? It says the men broke into the store, but there were no witnesses. So how do they know it was men? You're thinking lady robbers. Like Catwoman. <laughs> I like it. Very cinematic. Do you think Grandma could have helped? Are you seriously asking if I think my mother was an accomplice in all this? I like to think she couldn't have been. I like to think that the the maximum amount of involvement that she could have had would be something like she knew it was happening but didn't say anything. But not like she actively helped. Like she was a driver, the getaway driver. <laughs> eh. On second thought, maybe not. Grandma Helen was too smart to get involved in something like that. But she wasn't smart enough to not be involved with this man in the first place. Not that we know when it happened specifically, I guess, but... <gasps> this is... Why would he keep the freaking thing here, though? That's evidence. Because we needed to find out, that's why. Okay, I'll allow it. <laughs> Ledger? Ledger for what? Travel expenses. Wow, you're a robber, but you still, like, keep track of everything that meticulously? Anything interesting? Yeah, the formatting on this isn't great. He's gonna run out of money soon. I think he did run out of money by the end. Yeah, he only had $2,000 left. By the end, right? That's how I'm reading this? Boy, he really burned through it. I can't imagine just spending $40,000 on nothing. Well, 
some of it was on this boat. Yeah, seems like he really loved it. Can you imagine Grandma living here? Can you imagine August living here? Maybe then she would have been a famous painter, because she would have, like, had to paint a bunch of stuff to make it less ugly. For sure. <laughs> and you and Grandma would have had to fish every day. This is a very tempting scene you're painting. I'm imagining something like Little House on the Prairie, but on a boat. Little houseboat on the river? Rolls off the tongue. I, I mean, I felt bad that no one came here, but now that I know he's a robber and the, the money was obtained illegally, <laughs> I think Grandma dodged a bullet. It's gonna catch up to him eventually. But I'm, I'm curious if it did, though, because he would be pretty damn old right about now. Did he ever get caught? Should we look up some prison records or something? Maybe that'll help. On the other hand, he like he's he stole all this stuff if he made it off with it, but the the woman he loved and the kids didn't come over. Well, that's kind of sad in a way too. But there's still a big question. So is is our dad a war veteran or is our dad a bank robber? I mean, a grandpa. Grandpa. Tobacco box. It's buying all sorts of random crap, dude. A pipe! Cards. Who do you play cards with? Here's the front. <clears throat> Attention every- Oh, man, what? This doesn't work. Should have seen that coming. <laughs> I don't see any more notes here. This guy was a heavy smoker, too. I don't- Mom, do you want to take those smokes? I mean, I don't want to encourage you to smoke, but there are some free smokes right here. I'm pretty sure it was the same brand as what you smoked, too. Aha! Yep. That's the key for, what, the mailbox? The door that was- the door that was locked. I'm not sure if it needed a key or what. Flashlight. Okay. Hmm. Wine bottle. Probably evaporated. Liquor? Bought a whole bunch of liquor. Like a lot. Wow. That is... A lot to spend on whiskey. Forty-five dollars? A lot for back then, I mean. Whiskey was more expensive then, too. Plus, judging from the state of this place, this was probably a reoccurring order. Jeez, slow it down, Pierre. I don't think he was handling my mother's change of heart too well. With this amount of booze, it doesn't look like he was handling anything too well. Listen, let's just get back to it. It's cold in this busted old boat. With that kind of money, he could have just bought a new girlfriend. <laughs> I don't know, man. He didn't have to be too sad about it. But maybe he was... Well, I sort of have an image in my head that because he's a robber, maybe he's also like kind of playboyish, doesn't really care too much about stuff. But maybe he does, especially because those kids, he thinks, at least he thinks that August and Opal were his. I don't know if that's a fact. Dead? Okay, we're back out in front. What we could do is go to the mailbox because we have the key. I'm hoping it's for the mailbox. I'm not actually sure. Guess we'll find out. Kind of wish we could run a little bit. This is just completely abandoned now. How often can you find places these days that are actually just completely abandoned? Oh, I guess not. Okay. The key must have been for the other spot then. Here we go. The office. Okay-ish maintained. 
Cigar. Wanna try this one, Mom? <laughs> Gross. Typewriter. That's probably where he was writing the postcards from. I received your latest letter. This is my final response. You say you did all this for me, but you didn't. Everything you've done, you did for yourself. You were the one who was unsatisfied with our home, our income, and always wanted more. You were the one who made the decision to get more money through reckless illegal means. You were the one who decided to run to Canada to save your own skin without even telling me until it was too late to do anything but follow along. I'm not following along anymore. You say these are your kids too. Of course they are. But they're my children as well. I'm here with them every day, comforting their grief, trying to console them over the loss of their father. Trying my very hardest to keep up the ruse. But I'm getting used to it. Used to doing this on my own. Used to speaking for myself. To living this new life. I'm regaining my footing. I'm starting to feel okay. You say you'll do whatever it takes to make me happy. That you'll give me everything I've always deserved to have. I don't know how else to tell you this, but I think you already have. All I want now is to be left alone, free to lead this new life by my own means. Do not contact me or the children again. This is over for all of us. I think we were happy once. I hope you find happiness again. Helen. Ooh, this is a confirmation then! <sighs> so, I guess that's it. Grandma had enough time on her own. Without Grandpa, without Pierre, she realized she liked things better that way. Can you blame her? That's not the point. That's not the point of this. The point is that she confirmed that your dad is Pierre. No, not at all. It was her chance to have her own independence. And who would want to give up their whole life, everything they know, just for some guy and some money? <sighs> People have done worse for less. Yeah, but... Grandma had a pretty good life, didn't she? Her advice column, her art, her kids, her house. Maybe she just needed a little time to herself to realize how good she had it. Yeah, forget about this. Hey, dude. Are we not gonna care about how they just confirmed who your dad is? Looks like a mailbox key. Oh, I was hoping that would turn up. I swear, you could be so nosy sometimes. Only sometimes, I'm offended. Well, I guess that's it. No great mystery here. Maybe there's more in the mailbox. I feel like, I don't know, somebody must have done some statistical... surveys on this. People who have divorced have children. Their children also get divorced. There must be some sort of a higher percentage correlation, I feel like. Just looking at grandma... Yeah, was, she was a single mother raising two kids and then my mom is a single mother raising me. Hmm, makes me wonder about my own future too. Is it from Helen? Looks like Pierre tried to mail this, but he messed up the postage or something. Oh. Let's crack this bad boy open. Wait, opening other people's mail? I don't know, Tess. Oh, Pierre's probably already dead, man. Oh, if this guy was your real father, you're his next of kin, so it's fine. Is that how that works? Yes. I don't know, probably. Makes sense to me. I suppose you have a point. Let's see what we've got here. Sheriff's Department, Gein County, that's where we are, in Michigan? Ooh, return to sender. Ooh, 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 what's happening? To whom it may concern, I now confess my culpability for a spate of burglaries which resulted in the theft of almost one, one half of a million dollars! Oh, <gasps> it's not 40k! 40k was all he spent so far. I had worked as a property inspector for Gein County for over 10 years. Property inspector? At a poker game in 1966, I was approached by a man interested in trading blueprints and my knowledge for cash. 
Well, we saw a blueprint on his desk earlier. He and a few others targeted department stores and other businesses that carried large amounts of cash overnight. This relationship developed, and I became more and more involved. I was given 10% of the proceeds from the robberies in exchange for information on how they could evade detection from the stores as security. As time went on, the stores they chose to hit became riskier and riskier. I had no way to back out of the arrangement, as they had threatened not only my safety, but that of my families as well. Sensing no other option, I falsified a death certificate. What? <gasps> With papers, I lifted from the county office. I left my wife and daughters to cross the border under an assumed name. Giving them instructions to follow me, they never did. And I regret having asked them to. Crossed out, I wish that. What little of my stolen profits remain, I have destroyed. My wife Helen knew nothing of my crimes until it was too late. She only went along with the story of my death because she had no other choice. She is innocent. My decision to involve myself in this series of crimes was mine alone. I ask only that you leave my wife and daughters alone. This is my confession. Leonard Lambros. Oh! It's the same dude! Oh, well, I... Hmm. Okay, I, I guess that's nice that Grandma wasn't a cheater, but... Oh, Grandpa. Well, I, I, I guess we're the grandkid of a veteran and a property inspector and a bank burglar. Damn. So Pierre was my dad? He wrote this whole confession, but it never made it. It's been here ever since. I can't believe it. Well, it says right there. I... No, I mean rhetorically, Tess. Jeez. Right. No, that's not the point. The point is that it's your dad. It's Leo. <laughs> so my mother wasn't having an affair at all. Or whatever this would have been. Not except with Grandpa's secret identity. <laughs> so my father ha hadn't died when we thought he'd had a heart attack. He was just here on this dock. We never got to know him. He, he was just a car ride away. August and I suffered over something that never even happened. That's kind of crazy. But it did, though. He left your life. He never came back. He, I guess he couldn't have, but he could have... He had the whole new identity anyway. Oh, I don't know, man. That's even harder for Grandma, then. Yeah, because she grieved him, and then... Oh, surprise, I'm not dead. Actually, I just robbed a bank, and now come to Canada with me. Oh. It kind of did happen, though, didn't it? As far as you knew, it did. You lived with that your whole life, so... So, to you, it did. <sighs> I can't believe I... I can't believe he just... abandoned us. All this time, he was... here. I, he gave up his family, his children for an old boat and some booze. I wish I could have talked to him. Just one more time, and my mother living a lie for the rest of her life. I can't, I can't even imagine. I just wish I could have talked to her about it while she was alive. I just... Yum. I don't know if we should have found out about any of this. Just like how my mom didn't want me to ask about the broken plate, maybe I should have just left it at that. Wish you could have been there for her? Yeah. If we could have just... She didn't have to carry all this alone. I can't believe she would do that to us, lie to us her whole life. Why didn't she say anything? Even when we were all grown up. Maybe... Maybe she was trying to protect you. Yeah, maybe. August was so little. But I was old enough to know the truth. I just wish we would have talked. So, that's it? He spent all his money, tried to send this confession, and disappeared, and he never came back? Do you think he could still be alive? <sighs> I don't know. Honestly, I... I honestly don't care. It doesn't really matter, does it? Either way, he's gone. You don't want to keep going? Maybe we could find- No, 
I think we've found enough. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mom. He pretended to die. <laughs> but he really just left me, like everyone else. I didn't leave you. Well, maybe not yet. But your dad. <laughs> I thought you said you were the one who kicked Dad out. Doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. I mean... Well, it wasn't quite like that. I guess... What? Listen. I'll give you the full story in the car. I'm freezing out here. Yeah. <sighs> Tess, thanks for doing this. For coming with me. Of course. And for pushing me. To find out what happened. Just doing my job. I know I haven't been the best mom lately. But... But I am so lucky to have such an incredible, kind... Oh, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful, hardworking... Stop, stop! You'll make me cry. <laughs> Just such an amazing daughter. I love you, mom. I love you too, honey. It's good that we got some of it cleared up. Oh, we should tell Aunt August about it later on, too. But, wow, that was a lot for one day, huh? And I... We're gonna need some time to digest all of that. It's good that we don't have our phone. We don't have to text anyone about this. In the same directions as before. Mmm, <laughs> we're done. Yeah. This is just the same stuff as before. Hey, Mom. I was thinking about something. I wonder what Grandma would say about all this. <laughs> Good question. What do you think? I don't think she'd be too happy. Now, girls, I hid those private things away so people wouldn't find them. I don't know why you couldn't leave well enough alone. Well, if you didn't want people to find it, maybe you should have gotten rid of it. Yeah. Well, okay. Maybe I did want you to find it. A little bit. <laughs> so you asked about what happened with me and Dad. Uh-huh. Well, your dad, you know, was always looking for the next thing. Always had a new idea to try that was going to fix all his problems. Our problems. And for a while, it was the video store. And then that sales thing, and then he decided that he was going to be a professional poker player. Oh, Is that wow. What meant by full time gambler? Yeah. I mean, not really a gambler. He's not playing with his own money. It's all tournaments and stuff. They're playing as a sport. <laughs> Especially back then, like 2003. I feel like even in 2024, maybe that's something that people still don't really understand. Professional poker player. That's insane. Didn't anybody tell him the house always wins? Oh, I did. But this isn't playing poker against the house. It's against other players. There is no house. Believe me, I heard all his justifications. There were plenty. And even though he's been gone for a couple years, he's never told me why he's really out there. Why wouldn't he tell me? Because it sounds like bullshit. Maybe deep down, he's not so proud of it. Maybe he just didn't want to tell me till after he'd hit it big? So he chose right when Grandma really started getting sick and we moved in to take care of her to go off and follow his dream? He must really like poker. He likes it. But I wouldn't say that's the real reason he left. The split came at a really hard time. The theater was doing worse, and I was spending all my time there. Then your grandmother started really declining and needed more and more help. I think when I decided we needed to move in with her to care for her, well, being a full-time caretaker for his mother-in-law was not something your father ever signed up for. So he left for Nevada. He wanted to stay married. Said <sighs> we could make it work. But by that time... It was already over. Yeah, exactly. I realized that this... This was a pattern that would never really end. No, Mom. Do you blame me for ending it? No, you should... No, I don't. I don't. 
but yeah, this is one parent telling us one side of the story, which definitely does color things. Ah, uh, yeah, all that stuff he was telling me on the the phone about how, oh yeah, investments and meetings, no wonder it sounded so much like bullcrap. Well, so why was he even busy then? Like, what meetings? No, it's fine. No, I get it. You needed his support, and he just ran away. Yeah. Kind of forced your hand. Yeah, kind of. He made That's you the so bad small. guy. But I do miss him. I'm sorry for buying the tickets. Oh. I should have talked to you first. I guess I thought, I don't know, that dad, like, explained everything to me in a way that made sense and that he was living some great life out there. No, you... you shouldn't apologize. I'm sorry I didn't tell you earlier. I... I guess I was embarrassed. That I would have married such a ding-dong. Professional gambler. I didn't want to have to say it out loud. But I guess you can't keep running away from your problems forever. Now I have these tickets and I don't know what to do. I think you should go. To Reno? Yeah. I think it would be good for you to hear his side of the story. Hmm. We may not always get along, but he's not a bad guy. And you guys have a good relationship. You should spend some time with him. I think it'd be good for both of you. Uh, are, are you sure, Mom? Yeah, I'm sure. I wonder how long ago the divorce was. But it's not over Thanksgiving, right? Oh, God, no. And Miss August mac and cheese? Fat chance. I'm proud of you, Mom. <sighs> for what? What do you mean, for what? You're kick-ass. How many moms would stop packing up their house to drive their daughter all over Michigan to search for a family secret? Or run their own business, run a community theater? That's pretty She cool. runs it. <laughs> all right, all right. Maybe not the brightest idea from a financial perspective, but it is pretty cool. Thanks, honey. That, I mean, that means a lot. And speaking of businesses, that's pretty impressive that you made enough money to buy a plane ticket. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting that people are willing to pay me to design websites. Well, I've seen what you can do, and you do a great job. Oh, thanks, Mom. I'm serious. When I saw your web stuff, I mean, I don't always know what I'm looking at, but I know it looks good. Can we see? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> An artist's eye, just like your grandma. And my mom. But maybe it skipped over my aunt. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Her painting wasn't that bad. <laughs> well, I guess... I guess I always imagined that you'd go to Ford, like Grandma and me. It's silly, but but it's not fair of me. God knows I didn't do everything my mom wanted me to do. <sighs> oh my god, do we have to say it like that? <laughs> yeah, I'm just, just thinking about everything here. I'm still thinking about Dad, how he just... what. The way my mom's saying it, he didn't sign up to be a full-time caretaker for his mother-in-law. Yeah, that's just how the cookie crumbled. And what? Oh, but we should still stay married and make it work. Wow. That's... Well, I'll, I'll hear his side of the story is all I'll say for now. But yeah. <laughs> Thank you, for mom, for recognizing that. You know, we're not. We have three generations here, but we don't have to do the same thing over and over again. Like doing Kurt. I'm gonna let that double entendre pass right by me. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to let go, to see you as an adult, not just my baby girl. Mom. You were so cute back then, even cuter than now. Stop. <laughs> and you had the biggest head. Everyone <laughs> said it. Everyone said, that's the baby with the biggest head. Bowling ball head, the bowling ball baby. <laughs> yep, and it was all your dad. On my side, we all have perfect, tiny little heads. Like golf balls. Mm-hmm. So, what do you think about the whole August thing? Moving in with her? Yeah. I guess it's a big decision, moving to Chicago. Yeah, that's putting it mildly. 
Would you want to move in with her? Only if you do. And you didn't seem like... It sounds like you didn't think it was a good idea. We'll make it fine on our own. We'll, we'll figure something out. Because we don't know much about our aunt except for, like, seeing her a few days of, on vacation, I'm assuming. And she probably... Yeah, shows her best side and stuff. So you're calm, Mom, I think. I'm not sure. What about the Andromeda and Francine? It means starting over, kind of. Mm. Yeah. But it could be nice to get a fresh start. We've been through a lot of big changes this year. You've been through so many big changes. But I mean, we're making it work. And whatever we decide, we can make it work. I'm confident in that. Yeah. Me too. We should call August and tell her about all this. Oh, hey August, guess what? Our dad really is our dad. <laughs> <laughs> you can sleep easy. We're not French-Canadian after all. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever we end up doing, I'm just glad... I'm glad you're with me. Yeah. Me too. It's just like how my grandma... She thought about the comfort and... Uh, her, her own children's lives and stuff. If we move to Chicago... Yeah, I guess mom... Initially, she might have thought, No, no, we're not moving in with August. But then if she tries to think about it from my perspective and how I was like, Oh, it'd be a good idea. Then that's why she was a little bit more open to it. It's just a... We, we have to talk it out. It's about pro compromises, right? We just have to... Try to figure out all those little things. This was such a nice little story about three generations of women. Really enjoyed it. Made me think a lot about my own mom and grandma too. I'm pretty sure this is gonna end up being one of those ones where some people really really vibe with it and then others not so much. A more niche kind of game. Which I feel like Annapurna, a lot of Annapurna's games are like that. You know, recently I was playing Thirsty Suitors which I definitely felt like was the case as well. This game, some people who are really looking forward to the mystery aspect of it, mm, along the lines of something like Firewatch, they're probably going to be disappointed because it's a pretty mellow story. And as it turns out, oh, what? The mystery man that we've been looking for is just our grandpa? Okay, it's, it's nothing crazy happening, right? But yeah, it's really one of those ones where the journey matters more than the destination because on the surface, nothing has really changed and we're just going back to the way that we were pretty much right at the beginning. But what has changed is the relationship between Tess and Opal very subtly. It's not a great change, but it's the beginning. This was a great bonding experience and it's going to be the beginning of them having more open conversations and relations in the future. It feels like a very feminine focused story too. Earlier on we talked about how, oh, usually in video games you get a lot of dads and children, but this one, the struggles of being a mother, the struggles of yeah, being the child of divorced parents, and it's the struggle of trying to keep a home together when your husband is a bank robber and has just decided unilaterally that you're all gonna move to Canada and give up on everything that you have now. None of these people are perfect. Tess is not very tactful sometimes, says hurtful things to her mom because she's 16. Yeah, she's a kid. It's 16. Mom, Opal, very easy for me to judge her on the outside and be like, oh, she's a smoker. Oh, why is she bad mouthing her ex? Yada yada yada. But oh my god, do you know how much this woman had to struggle with? She's trying to keep her, take care of her mom, keep the theater running, take care of her child by herself because her husband decided, nope, I don't want to deal with this and just left. But we can stay married if you want. Oh my god. Sometimes some of the topics that came up in this, I mean, even the circumstances, were stuff that I could freakishly relate to. <laughs> um, well, my, my grandpa was not a, a bank robber, but still. I was actually recently having a conversation with my mom about how she raised me, and, you know, she was... She brought up about how she was often feeling like she was caught between her mom and me, and I, I think mothers are superhuman, and they don't 
They don't get enough credit for all the things they do, all the crap they have to go through. <laughs> we can have these conversations now because I'm no longer 16. But Tess still being 16, we could see that by the end here, they were starting to appreciate each other. You know, we all have good and bad things, right? But we were learning to appreciate the good things about each other way more. Hey mom, like, thank you for driving us. Like, who, what other mom would drive us on a road trip to go to Canada on a whim? And Opal appreciating, hey, you know, Tess, you're pretty good at the whole web design stuff. You're starting a whole business. That's entrepreneurship and all that, right? It was definitely nice to see it take a turn in that direction. I do find myself wishing they got into these topics a little bit more. I felt like maybe sometimes they were grazing past it. And because the runtime is not particularly long, we didn't really get them. Gives you a little bit to think, but it doesn't really stay on any one thing for too long. Hmm. Enjoyed it though, and I thought the voice acting was really good too. Yeah, they, it felt like a very believable mother and daughter pair. As a follow-up to Gone Home and Tacoma, I'm not sure if we can really consider this a follow-up because if you've been keeping up with this game, then you know that the development's been quite turbulent behind the scenes and um, yeah, it's... It might even be a bit of a mini miracle that this game came out. Tacoma actually came out in 2017, which is crazy, because that's... That's seven years ago, my god. That one definitely felt like it was bigger in scope, with a bigger cast. Six people, I believe, on a spaceship. This one was more tightly focused, with a smaller scope. Again, though, it, it might... It, it's hard to imagine what was going on, because... I don't think they meant for this game to take seven years to come out. And... As outsiders, we're not really ever going to be privy to what it was like. But I just want to say that I do really like what I saw, and I, I want to hope to see more from the people who worked on this game in the future too. I don't know... This, this game is credited to the Open Roads team. I don't know if there's plans to continue to make more games after this game. It might just be like a team to finish up this game and then they're all moving on to different things. I have no clue. Either way, I enjoyed it as a short little story, and I hope you did too. Yeah, I like to hope that there is still room on the market for these more mellow types of stories without too much drama or explosions and whatnot. This game made me want to spend time with my mom. Hmm. I'm never, <laughs> she'll never see this video and I'll never show it to her, but I'd like the internet as my witness. And you know, whoever, whoever, a <laughs> hundred years from now, a thousand years from now, when they recover some ancient YouTube videos, I want people to know that there is nobody on this planet I love more than my mom. Thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!